Representative Antonio Maestas. He's a Democrat out of District 16. Bernalillo uh, has been a representative since 2007. Uh, welcome, Representative. Thank you for having me. Good morning. Mo, and I have to uh, disclose right away, I was making lawyer jokes at your expense. <laughs> <laughs> with, with, Stop uh, to tell a joke I haven't heard. <laughs> <laughs> and so, so let's start there because it's interesting. I know that oftentimes our legislature is hit up with we have too many lawyers, and if you look at the numbers, that's probably not the case. But talk for a second about what it's like to be a sole proprietor attorney serving in a citizen legislature. What does that do to your business? Oh, God, it it, um, it took me four years to figure it out, uh, Janice, but I, I'm living the dream. To be a, a lawyer and a lawmaker is a fantastic way to contribute to the bar. So, Mike, I do mostly misdemeanor cases and relatively non-complicated cases, so my practice isn't very sexy, but it allows me to postpone all my hearings and, and serve in Santa Fe. Uh, Representative, uh, we see you have House Bill 464, increased penalties for certain crimes. Talk about why this legislation is important. Thank you. Uh, homicides are like no other crime. The, the justice system cannot make it right. The criminal defendant can never, ever make it right because somebody's dead. There's multiple victims, and the pain of a homicide lasts generations. And so the penalties for homicides... Um, are disproportionate to other crimes, and so I wish to increase them. A second-degree murder from 15 to 20 years maximum, a voluntary manslaughter from 6 to 10, and involuntary manslaughter from 18 months to 3 years. Okay. And you also have one, and I thought was very interesting, because we're talking about the rights of people. House Bill 463 about uh, no license suspensions for failure to appear. Yes, thank you. When you enhance any sentence, it costs money. The, the homicide bill has to be paid for, and there's really no money in the budget to increase uh, the budget of the DAs, the public defenders, the courts. In fact, those agencies are going to take a cut. This bill, I think, will save us as much or more money to pay for the homicide uh, bill. When you miss traffic court, you get a bench warrant. Ultimately, you're arrested or you postpone and you deal with the traffic ticket accordingly. However, motor vehicle department suspends your license. And so many times, six months later or a year later, you get pulled over, you get arrested for driving on a suspension that you didn't know existed. And it, so it sends you from traffic court to criminal court. And, it, and if we take this off the books, uh, I think it'll save two, 3,000 cases a year statewide. And so we can focus scarce resources on violent crimes and now, more. Now, Representative, uh, if you had passed that earlier, Michael would not have had to pay a, a compact <laughs> fine in Arizona <laughs> for driving when he was 16 when he wasn't there. Uh, <laughs> I was in there high school, and, the, and we never could... Uh, could convince them that I didn't have a driver's license in 1968, so I paid $102 to make it go away. You are a member of the Judiciary Committee. You're also a vice chair of Consumer and Public Affairs. Representative yeah. Jim Spence, uh, got a kind of shift uh, gears towards the budget. Uh, sure. One of the things that we, we're watching and kind of paying attention to all the committees and everything going on in Santa Fe since the session started is we're seeing a lot of straight party line votes. Now, there are some things that are passing unanimously. What in the, in the budget reconciliation to narrow this $400 million gap that is there, what do you see where there is consensus between Democrats and Republicans on things to do to narrow the budget deficit and balance it? Well, actually, a lot of the, the struggle is between the legislature and the executive, not so much uh, Democrat and Republican, but we all heard the electorate loud and clear. They want less government, less intrusive government. So we have to cut government. However, the two biggest budget items are education and Medicare, which the executive campaign could not touch. So that leaves a very small sliver of government left. The next biggest budget item is Department of Corrections, prisons. We have millions and millions of dollars going into our prison system without cutting recidivism rates. I don't think there's a political will to cut that budget, believe it or not. But what I'm fighting for as a legislator is fully funding the courts, the DAs, the public defenders, but more importantly, uh, fully funding domestic violence services. The, the services that go to domestic violence victims has been cut 
over the past three years, if there's a 26% proposed cut by the executive, if that were to occur, uh, that would be incredibly detrimental to families and children who uh, live in violent homes. Representative, the, 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 let's take... Let's go back to Medicaid uh, real quick here, and Janice, and you can get in there. All right, I'll but, put uh, my turn, my turn. Yeah. Uh, the, in the state of New Mexico, the uh, Medicaid people who are eligible for Medicaid are defined as being people who are 240% above the federal poverty line. Why would we have such a large definition of poverty and eligibility for Medicaid when we have this big budget deficit and we're looking around for places to cut. Uh, if the federal government defines poverty at one level, why should we be 240% above that level? You know what, that's a great question. Like those, uh, those numbers were implemented years ago. I think it's because of the, the rate of return, frankly. One, it provides health services in the rural communities, lower income folks, but more importantly, we get a 4 to 1 a three to one or three four to one federal match, and so it makes sense, all things being equal. But uh, so poverty but is a growth right. industry, is what you're saying? No, absolutely not. If the state of New Mexico spends one dollar on the Medicare, then the federal government kicks in four. I mean Medicaid. Three. Medicaid, forgive okay. me, Medicaid. So, so it's a good rate of return locally because we get four federal dollars for every one we spend. There's no other system that that has you know we spend twenty five cents you you get a dollar's worth of health services that goes into the local economy. I think that was the thought process when it was first instituted. You nailed it right. Watch the incentives. Watch the incentives. Okay, Representative, I want to change gears here. There's a lot of discussion about uh, sex offenders and registration, and we actually have kind of a big problem. And so as full disclosure, I helped to write the criminal sexual conduct legislation that's on the books today. Yes. And right now you have made some changes or proposing some changes in the sex offender registration requirements. And I want to throw this out there because one of our problems with sex offenders is there are many different classes of sex offenders. The habitual sex offender, I will tell you, probably cannot be rehabilitated. But there are other people who get caught in this web and they're never never able to completely pay their debt because of these registrations. And you have a bill that's kind of addressing this. That's yes, House thank you. There's, um, there's a national movement to uniform the laws of sex offender registration nationally. So this language is adopted from other states for two reasons. One, so that when sex offenders move, they can't make the excuse of, oh, I didn't know that was the local rule or the local regs. And then two, it specifically, specifically outlines the do's and don'ts of law enforcement so that law enforcement isn't susceptible to, to civil rights lawsuits and such. So this language just kind of tightens it up, makes it uniform, closer to other states, and hopefully will protect our uh, neighborhood and families better. So can we go back to Medicaid? Uh, Obviously, there's a problem with reimbursement from the federal government. There's also a problem with telling someone who is earning 240% above the federal poverty level that they have an entitlement. Is there going to be any movement in the state there to get that, that uh, definition of, uh, of poverty in New Mexico in line with the federal uh, government's definition? And I'm sorry, but you only got about 25 seconds on that. I don't know, but that's a great suggestion. There's numerous suggestions from our constituents, but we've got to look at the entire budget with a fine tooth comb and, uh, and cut. I think the projections are going to be more towards $215 million, but nonetheless, everything should be on the table, including the Department of Corrections, including the big bureaucracies uh, in the education, and we've got to do the right thing for the people. So hopefully we'll get it done. All right. Uh, we have been talking with Representative Antonio Mo. Maestas, uh, actually, we have still have a minute left. I oh, miscalculated. You just threw me off, didn't I'm you? I'm sorry about that. Okay. So, all right, well, one I'm more quick question for the representative. I, I was just going <laughs> to say, <laughs> his email is rep16 at mojustice.com. Hey, I like a domain name, Mo Justice. Uh, <laughs> you, you, you as Thank a, you very much. You as a representative, uh, you're the closest thing. Anybody can come talk to you. What are the people saying to you? Wow, I think, folks, there's a lot of fear. There's a lot of anxiety uh, as a result of the, of the recession. People are angry at the federal government. This wonderful woman called me up today, and she was so fearful talking to me about Find gold and silver that the that the world's going to end. But <laughs> but I mean I we explained to her that look we the bailouts the bailouts are just horrible. They just they just are excruciatingly frustrating. 
Well, we couldn't go into a 20-year abyss. Uh, you know, the financial markets are stable. We just have to, you know, stabilize our state government. I think the economy is pretty good. That's the point we got to do. we got to stabilize. Thank you for what you do for our state. We really appreciate it. We'll have you back on. Uh, that is uh, Representative Maestas, and we'll Thank be right you. back.